Good evening, everyone. Time for another member update. Now, this is a two-hour chart of silver provided by netdenia.com. You can see I've drawn a number of things here. The first one is going to be this downtrend channel. You can see that it's been in place since about mid-May, and uh, it's falling about 50 cents a month or so. And you can see we're now testing the upper band of that trend channel. Uh, as I point out before, the on-balance volume was indicating a rolling over and crash. This may be indicating that. You can see that the MACD kind of looks like it's rolling over, but if we look closely, it also looks like it may start to rally up. So we're watching this line very, very closely to see if we get a breakout there. That's going to be a reversal of a downtrend that's been in place for a number of months. Now, the other big thing here is the volume. The volume has been fairly steady, but uh, heavy as well. You can see the big spike on that fake out sell off and then rally, but uh, it's still very, very heavy vol volume and it's been going on for quite some time. Now, it's a ridiculous amount of paper that's being traded back and forth. We know how tight the physical market is and uh, we're later gonna look at some deals that uh, we wanna keep an eye on. Before we do that, I want to jump over to Dave Kranzler. He's really been doing great stuff lately. His site is Investment Research Dynamics, and uh, the YouTube channel is called Shadow of Truth. He did a very good interview recently with Rob Kirby. Uh, but let's read this article, Gold Manipulation, It's Much Bigger Than You Think. Now, if gold manipulation is bigger than you think, then silver manipulation is 10 times bigger than that. That's my opinion. Uh, I think that they're much more vulnerable to silver. We're going to show that when we look at how much money Americans waste and how much money it would take to change things in the silver market. But let's read this from Michael Edwards, editor at Activist Post. All of your work is outstanding, but this one goes beyond. Wow, thank you very much for your analysis. This is one of the stories that can really open people's minds on a broad scale, that there truly are things called conspiracies. Maybe if people can face the obvious, they will dig even deeper. Now, the thing is about conspiracies, uh, this is actually, conspiracy theory is actually a term coined by the, I think it was the CIA, trying to discredit their critics. And this has been a meme in the mainstream media for a very, very long time now. Um, there's a series of excellent books that I'm reading right now uh, called Sinister Forces 1, 2, and 3. Um, they're re really incredible. I'll put a link to that book. Um, and he goes into detail about how the U.S. government has intentionally tried to marginalize any of their critics by labeling them conspiracy theorists. And that's really the theme here when we think about it deeply. The numbers, uh, the numbers show that this thing can end very, very quickly if the mind control that people are under changes. I'm gonna show you how much money people waste and how much they could be putting into silver. And it has nothing to do with uh, the amount of investment dollars that are out there it already could be over. It's just because the people are under a form of mind control that they can't seem to shake this thing off. So let's keep reading. The gold price manipulation scheme will go down as the biggest financial market scandal in U.S. history for numerous reasons. They include the destruction of the free market system in the United States. The manipulation of the gold and silver prices eventually led to the manipulation of U.S. interest rates via the Fed, the stock market via the plunge protection team, and the currency markets. That's Bill Murphy from GATA. The gold manipulation scheme has taken on historic proportions. It's been going on for several decades. Witness the London gold pools of the 1960s, and we've talked about that before. That's when de Gaulle came and demanded his gold, and that's when Nixon had to slam the gold window shut. Frank Veneroso who wrote the brilliant Gold Book in 1998, told Sprott's John Embry and I many years ago that the gold price suppression scheme was much bigger than you think. Now, if the gold price suppression scheme is much bigger than you think, then I would say that the silver price suppression scheme is 10 times bigger than that. Frank found out the US government was taping his phone calls and ever since has shut up about what GATA has to say. 
Frank was one of those who exposed the gold leasing scheme, which is how the gold cartel did their things so many years ago. It is how Gata knows the central banks have well less than half the gold they say they have in their vaults. Frank got his information from Bank of England source, who has since died. Each new financial crisis, emerging market debt, long-term capital, the tech bubble, the housing and credit bubble was met with successively larger amounts of money printing and credit creation. Print money to keep the banks and markets from collapsing and create more credit to keep the giant Ponzi scheme going. Once the gold bull market got underway in late 2000, early 2001, in order to support the monetary intervention required to keep the U.S. systemic shell game going, the manipulation of the gold markets began to intensify. It also started to become more obvious in nature to those who were researching, trading, and investing in the precious metal sector. GATA was and is instrumental in exposing and reporting the facts about the manipulation of the gold market. At the end of 2000, the Treasury had $5.6 trillion in debt outstanding. The current amount is $18.15 trillion, but there's a debt issuance ceiling in force now for which the Obama gover government is circumventing by raiding federal pension funds, the Social Security Trust Fund, issuing IOUs and other cash reservoirs that will soon run out. The debt ceiling will have to be lifted again, like to $20 trillion. That's nearly a 400% increase in Treasury debt since 2000. At the end of 2000, the Treasury debt to GDP ratio was 54%. Today, it's 102.5%, and this does not include the Treasury's Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac guarantees. Now, they just released a GDP number today, which is rigged. You can watch the latest Peter Schiff on that. And uh, they revised upward the first quarter. So they're making sure that they don't have a recession. But of course, these are just fake figures. Today, it's 102.5%. And this does not include the Treasury's Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac guarantees. In other words, the amount of government debt has grown at twice the nominal rate of the U.S. economy in the same period. Note, the wealth produced by the U.S. is part of the theoretical backing of the dollar. This is just government on balance sheet debt, total government contingent liabilities, and we know what those are. Uh, there's also derivatives, we know, $200 trillion. Yes, China has its issues as well, but it has two things the U.S. does not. $3.4 trillion in foreign currency reserve backed by a big trade surplus and a massive amount of gold. In other on the other hand, the U.S. foreign reserves are roughly $39 billion, and it runs a $40 billion a month trade deficit. It's highly unlikely that the U.S. government possesses legal title to little or, if any, gold. In my opinion, the ability of the U.S. in conjunction with its European vassals and the BIS, now I agree completely with that. These, these guys are all in league. The U.S., the Europeans, the BIS... This is the Anglo-American Western Empire. This is the empire that's collapsing right now. They're all in it together. They all work together, and they're all behind this suppression scheme. To keep the U.S. dollar fiat money system in motion is largely dependent on the ability to keep the price of gold suppressed. In 2011, when silver threatened to take out $50 and gold was headed in the $2,000, the U.S. elitists were staring into the abyss. That's when the gold market intervention took on a whole new dimension. This is best visualized with this graphic. Now, this is a great graphic here. This is the central bank balance sheet versus the gold price. And you can see that right when they did the smackdown on silver, right here, this is when they tried to reverse things. They took gold out later. It was in September of that year. They took out silver in May. They took out gold in September. But you can see that the metals were racing away from the balance sheet number. That makes sense because it was a potential hyperinflation. Uh, that's when they came in and did the paper smackdown. Now you can see the incredible divergence that we have here. Gold has since then not kept up, has actually declined in price, and the balance sheet of the Fed has just continued to go up. The dislocation and the correlation between the price of gold and the size of the Fed balance sheet shown in the graph above is further supported by the manipulation activity reflected in these two graphs in set. Now, he gives you the latest smackdown. We know uh, that that was a ridiculous one. 
Let's read about that a little bit. The graph on the left shows the massive paper ambush on the gold futures market on Sunday evening, July 19th. An enormous amount of paper gold contracts were dumped into the COMEX Globex electronic trading system during one of the slowest trading periods at any point in time during the trading week. Now this was an attempt to blame the Chinese in my opinion, but I don't believe that the selling came out of China. A bona fide seller trying to sell a big position at the best possible execution prices would never have dumped a position like this. Now, I don't 100% agree with that. Um, in some rare instances, when you have a falling market and, or a rounding over market and uh, you don't want to get ahead of yourself, sometimes you just dump everything. That does happen. But clearly, that's a very rare situation and the only way that that would be uh, a legitimate play is if you knew the market was going to trend lower from there. Otherwise, that type of activity clearly is based on manipulation. The only explanation is that someone wanted to drive the price of gold lower and make a point doing so. This particular occurrence in the gold market has been a recurring event over the life of the gold bull market. However, the frequency of the above trading pa pattern has significantly increased since 2011. And we'll skip that uh, TF Metals graph. Finally, since mid-December, when it seems some sort of derivatives bomb exploded, the anti-gold propaganda from the media has significantly intensified. Now, this is something that I see all the time, and very few people talk about it. But you can see the way the media is completely controlled because they coordinate their stories with the gold attacks. Uh, it's very clear that it's a government-controlled media complex. The government is manipulating, whether you know you say it's the Fed or the BIS, they're all in it together. The, all the governments are suppressing the price of precious metals and their media lapdogs are coming out with the stories uh, to keep the sheeple in that mind control state because that is the most important thing. As I'm going to show you here, when you look at the numbers, the key here is the mind control, because if that were broken, this thing would snap instantly. This is especially true since the July 19th ambush. It's not just anti-gold propaganda, however. It's a grotesque preponderance of insidious misinformation and disinformation. The blatant manipulation of the gold market in conjunction with the rabid dissemination of anti-gold rhetoric from both the financial press and, the Wall, and Wall Street reeks of desperation desperation to keep a lid on the one market signal that would undermine the elitist perpetration per, I'm sorry perpetuation of the US dollar based systemic ponzi scheme which enables them to loot and confiscate middle class wealth middle class being defined as anyone not wealthy enough to buy their own politician or not in a privileged position to benefit from the wealth confiscation schemes and then he goes on talking about the shadow of truth so Let's look at just one example here of how, in my opinion, it's just pure mind control. That's why they do it. So I've done a number of stories before on how much money is wasted with uh, things that the U.S. public buys. And again, you have to keep in mind that we're talking about a world market for gold and silver, but we're only talking about U.S. money. So the numbers are actually going to be five to tenfold worse than whatever I give you here. But let's just look at this one thing here. This is the CDC's economic facts about U.S. tobacco production and use. So this is just tobacco. And I'm just going to look at cigarettes. So you can see here that in the U.S., the number of cigarettes... Let's find this here. Cigarette sales. During 2014, 264 billion cigarettes were sold. Now, I already did the math. It's a 20 to the pack and you divide it at a price of about $6.28. You get $80 billion a year that are spent in the United States, just in the United States, on cigarettes. 
That's not including chewing tobacco, cigars, and all the rest. Let's just look at cigarettes, $80 billion. Now let's think about how much that would impact the silver market. Let's just take 10%. Let's say that 10% of the people that are spending this money on cigarettes quit, and instead of buying cigarettes, they bought silver. That's gonna be $8 billion. $8 billion a year comes to 500 plus million ounces of silver at current prices. So if just the U.S. public, not even the rest of the world, just the U.S. public, only 10% of the money that's spent on tobacco went into physical silver, that would be more than half of the entire world supply of physical silver. That would completely break the market. Um, so you can see how, how important it is that they keep this mind control in place. Not only do they use the price manipulation of the precious metals, but they use their lapdogs in the media. If you'll notice, you don't even hear them talking anymore about the allocation of gold and silver in a portfolio. It used to be 5 or 10%. Well, if you look at the numbers, they're as staggering as these numbers for cigarettes if they even talked about having 5% of people's investable assets in silver, we're talking about a ridiculous blowout number. There's no way that, uh, that there's enough silver at present prices. Prices would have to go tenfold, a hundredfold. We don't even know where prices would go. But the bottom line is that it's this mind control that they have to keep people under that, that they keep spending their money on useless things, but and even spend their money on investments that are paper investments, but they have to keep them from spending their money on things like physical silver because that would simply break their back. Now, let's look at some buys that are out there. The first one I wanted to look at was that KJC coin, and the reason why is because the Australian dollar, actually, let's go ahead and pull up the chart here of the Aussie dollar. Uh, it's been very, very weak. Let's pull off the indicators. The Aussie dollar has been very, very weak lately. And you can see that it's come down significantly from where it was. Let's go back and look at the financial crisis. The Australian dollar had some very violent moves in regards to the financial crisis. You can see it sold off dramatically at the beginning and then it rallied very, very strongly. So. Let's go back and look at the rate on that. And you can see it's 0.73 to the dollar. So the ones that I found here, this is the site that I looked at before, KJC Coins, it's in Australia. Now I didn't buy anything there because I didn't want to deal with international wire transfers, but I think that maybe some of the members actually picked up some of the coins. Now I've isolated some others here that seem to be kind of an outlier. And we'll just look at this and then look at the translation. So uh, if we look at the half ounce goats here, this comes in at about where they're at at Gainesville and we're gonna look at Gainesville, they've got them back in. So that one doesn't really do it. Same thing with the half ounce horses. This is just too high at 27.50. Now the half ounce year of the dragon, this gets a little bit interesting because you can see we're at 2375 Australian. You can see all prices are in Australian. So 2375 in Australian dollars, um, we're talking about $17. Now $17 seems a little high, but you have to remember when the dragon was out there, um, I think I bought some of mine for 22. I got others as low as 12, but 17 is pretty low. So you can see they've got about 200 of those in stock. That might be something someone wants to look at. The half ounce snake is even more interesting here at 2250. You can see that that translates to 1642 in US dollars. But the big one here for me is going to be this, where is it? The year of the dragon, the one ounce dragon. Now, if you remember, the Year of the Dragon, the one ounce, it started off at about a hundred bucks and you never saw those coins. I never saw them really get below 40 to 50. 
they have 60 of them here and it's kind of a risky play but uh, you can see that that price of 48.25 actually translate to $35 an ounce. Now that's still very, very high, so that's gonna be a risky play, but I, I didn't look them up on eBay, but I would suspect that one ounce, 2012 one ounce dragons are going for significantly more than $35. So that's an interesting play. Now I mentioned that Gainesville coins has gotten the half ounce back in. You can see that it's currently at 493 of those. They're as low as 1079. That's cheaper than they are anywhere. Uh, it doesn't look like there's any kind of delayed shipping on this. So this is probably gonna be a, a very, very good deal also to pick up. Um, it's 339 over spot, but again, getting a half ounce lunar coin, I think the ones I got were around 10, so they bumped it up a little bit, but they've got almost 500 of those back in stock. So those are some interesting plays that people might wanna look at. Now, uh, for those of you that are still having problems with the member site, remember to send an email to brotherjohnf at yahoo.com. I'm still dealing with all of the renewals of people subscriptions that happened yesterday. So uh, I've got almost all the passwords reset, the refunds that were done and all that stuff, uh, double pays and people have mistakes. I've got those taken care of, but if you do have any other problems, make sure you send me an email. So we're, we're looking at that trend channel on silver. It's gonna be pretty quick here, whether we go up or down. Um, the trend channel is still in place, but we're getting near the upper band of that, and that's just on this lower leg here. Uh, that's just the lower leg that we're on to see if that trend can break. Uh, if we do turn around and go down, which is what I'd really like to see, I would like to see a washout down to 10 bucks. And as I said before, the reason why I'd like to see that is because that's really going to uh, break this thing wide open, in my opinion. It's going to make such a discrepancy between the physical and the paper that it might actually be the breaking of their system. So I would like to see that drop. I don't think the price of the physical is really gonna drop. I think just as I showed you on that half ounce go to Gainesville, it's actually nearly a dollar more now than the last ones that they had. And the price is, is about the same, uh, just maybe just a little bit lower. So that's gonna be the main story is the mind control. We have to keep in mind that even a small percentage of people in just the U.S. alone, like I said, if 10% of the smokers stopped smoking cigarettes and put that money in physical silver, it would be game over. And we'll talk to you next time.